Hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, now it's time to really get into the, um, sort of the, um, I don't necessarily want to say the meat of the game, but kind of the more, um, nitpicky stuff of the game, or like the, oh, here's that cat on the stairs. So, probably what you want to do if you see the cat here, well, I guess you can walk around him. You can walk around the cat. Oh, he tries to he tries to follow you. Well, the thing is, if you touch the cat on these stairs... Oh, oh, that darn cat really did it to you this time. Tripping over the cat, you fall to your death. I don't know, I think if Gwydion's stupid enough to trip over a cat, he probably deserved to die. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try that again. Oh, the cat's still here. So basically what we want to do is come here when the cat is not here. Or you can just walk around the cat, but the easiest thing to do is just to come here when the cat's not here. So, this is the wizard's underground laboratory. You look in awe around this torch-lit underground room. It appears to be a laboratory. A wizard's laboratory! I don't know why wizards is in quotation marks. I don't think that the use of quotation marks to emphasize text is stylistically correct, but whatever. Against the earthen walls, there are rows of shelves holding numerous jars with, which contain str strange, unknown ingredients. The shelves also hold skeletons of small animals and birds, some human skulls and bones, and other odd instruments, whose use you do not know. Against the earth wall is a massive oak table with a spacious worktop. The narrow stone steps lead up to the wizard's study. Okay. So what we want to do here, first of all, is go to this shelf in the back and take a look at it. This will tell us the names of the things that we want to pick up. Uh, so there are one, two, three, four, six of them. So let's go ahead and get them. So let's get the, uh, the powdered fish bone, the nightshade juice, the mandrake root powder, the Saffron, toad spittle, and toadstool powder. Okay, now that we've done that, what we need to come, uh, what we need to do is come down here. Uh, and on this table are a large leather-bound book, a mortar and pestle, a little brazier holding charcoal, and a flint plus measuring cups, beakers, flasks, and stirrers. What we need to do here is conduct a, a bunch of magic spells. I believe there are seven magic spells in the game, and the way that you know how to do them is they're in the manual. Now, this is something that a lot of people fight about and kind of have, have very, um, very different feelings about in this game. Uh, this is the game's copy protection, after a fashion, because the only way that you can know how to actually perform these spells is by reading them in the manual that came with the game. And the idea is that if you didn't have the manual, then you wouldn't know how to do the spells and you couldn't finish the game. So some people say that this is kind of a good way of doing copy protection because it relies on... It, it incorporates an actual gameplay element into the game, as opposed to the that sort of hokey copy protection which says please type in the word like the the twelfth word on page seventeen of the manual or something like that um, but other people say that actually would probably be better than this because this requires you to type in an extensive series of steps exactly as they are in the manual and if you if you mess up if you mistype anything then you'll immediately die I'll go ahead and show you basically what this entails. So let's go ahead and save the game here. The first thing that you need to do is turn to the right page. So what we're going to do, like I said, there are seven spells in the game, but the most urgent spell, the most pressing spell that we need to perform is found on page 25. It's transforming another into a cat. So you type these in Roman numerals, so turn to page XXV. With trembling hands, you turn the pages of the sorcery of old and prepare to follow its instructions precisely. You know you must work with the utmost care. Every step is critical. Each step must be done in the proper way, in the proper sequence. You tremble in anticipation. 
And I think probably a good first step for any magical spell in this game is turn off the game's sound, because that music that plays during this sequence is quite annoying. I mean... I mean, just listen to it. I mean, doing this magic stuff is unnerving enough already, and then having to uh, listen to that while you're doing it, I mean, you probably probably go completely insane. So let me first of all show you what happens if you do something wrong. Uh, like, for example, I don't know, look at the cat. The mysterious, mu mysterious music stops. What could this mean? A strange feeling comes over you. You wonder if he could have made a mistake. That was a musing, Gwydion. So basically, the point here is that if you mess up the spell, uh, it will turn against you, and it will basically hurt you uh, in the way that you were trying to... Uh, in some way that kind of ironically reflects on what you were trying to do with the spell. So, anyway, let's go ahead and do this. One thing that I thought is interesting, by the way... Huh? Whoops, turn, turn page. Turn to page. Whoops, hold on. Let's try that again. Turn to page. What? Oh, I pressed the left alt key on my keyboard, and for some reason, apparently pressing alt works the same as pressing enter. It makes the game accept the command that you typed in. Let's try this one more time. Turn to page XXV, and I'll turn off the sound before I do so. Uh, what I find interesting is that if you turn off the sound, for some reason the game tells you that a mysterious music fills the laboratory. If you have the sound on, then it just, uh, of course it plays the music, but if you have the sound turned off when you start, then it tells you that music fills the laboratory. I think this, as far as I know, this is the only instance of a Sierra game reacting to having the sound turned on or off. And it's not a strong reaction, it's just a, a message that pops up. But if you have the sound turned off, it tells you about the music. It's kind of interesting. I haven't, uh, I don't know of any other instance in a Sierra adventure that does this, that actually has some kind of reaction or some sort of consequence for turning the sound off. So that's, that, I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyway, okay, we have to hurry a little bit because we're running low on time. So put Mandrake... I'm reading the spells off a reference that I have, so you'll need you'll need to have a reference if you're going to play the game. Anyway, put Matter Group Powder in a bowl, okay, and also put the cat hair in the bowl, and put two spoons of fish oil, not gish oil, in bowl. Huh? Seriously? Put okay. Two in T W O instead of numeric two, a fish oil in bowl. What? What did I do wrong? Okay, put mandrake root powder in bowl. Put cat hair in bowl. Put. Two spoons of fish oil in bowl. Okay, you pour the fish oil into the bowl and keep the empty jar. Okay, so far so good. Stir a mixture with spoon. Mix the ingredients together, the mixture turns into an oily, disagreeable dough with cat hairs sticking out of it. Okay, uh, put the dough on the table. Scrunching your nose in distaste, you grab the oily dough from the clay bowl and put it on the oaken table. And now let's pat dough into cookie. Pushing the palm of your hand on the oily dough, you flatten it until it is in the shape of a cookie. After a bit, the cookie hardens. And now for every spell, there is this, a four-line poem that you must recite. Again, exactly as it's written in the manual. So, the nice thing, though, is that the game is paused while this is on the screen, so you don't have to be too fast about it. So I'll take my time. Mandrake, root, and hair of cat. Mix oil 
of fish and give a pat. A feline from the one who eats. This appetizing, actually I don't think it's very appetizing, but this appetizing magic treat. And finally, we just wave the magic wand. You wave the magic wand or the cookie, then take it from the table and carry it with you. Successfully completing the spell, you again look at the wizard's laboratory. Great. That was the first spell of the game, and we got 10 points for successfully... You get 10 points for every successful spell that you complete. So, that's it. We have just created a cookie, which for some reason the game won't let us look at with a text command. But if you come here and... Wait, where's the cookie? There. The cat cookie. The only resemblance to a real cookie is its flat, round shape. It is hard and has cat hair sticking out of it. Definitely non-appetizing. So, um... This cookie is kind of disgusting. If somebody eats the cookie, it will turn them into a cat forever, according to the game's manual. But, the cookie is so disgusting that we could never convince Mananan to eat it. In fact, I don't think even Gwydion eats it. If you say, eat cookie... You don't need to now. Yeah, the game doesn't even let you eat the cookie. So... We can't just give the cookie to Manan and say, Hey, Manan, eat this. We'll need to figure out some way to make it more appetizing. What do we have? We could mix it with something else. We could mix it with some other food. Like, for example... Well, you can't really mix it with... You can't really mix it with mutton or with fruit. Don't think you can mix it into bread either. But what about that porridge that we got from the... Uh, from the bears. What if you mix the cookie into the porridge? Uh, put cookie in porridge? There we go. The porridge conceals the crumbled cookie. It still looks as appetizing as ever. Aha! And now we have the poisoned porridge. And it doesn't have a star on it, so Mananan won't know that... Uh, and we can carry it around, and we can even give it to Manan, and, and he won't know that there's anything suspicious about it, because it'll just look like regular, uh, like regular uh, porridge. What happens if we eat the porridge? Okay, some cat hair sticks to your teeth. Um... So yeah, the game really expects you to do this. The game really expects you to give this porridge to Manan, and which has this cat cookie kind of crumbled into it. Uh, even though it's going to have cat hair in it. Uh, this seems like a pretty... Uh, this seems like a pretty doubtful proposition to me. But what else can we do? We're running out of time. Mananan shows up usually between... 25 minutes to 30 minutes. We're at 22 and a half minutes now, so we have precious little time to get out of here. So what we need to do to make sure that Mananan doesn't kill us, is we need to pull the lever again to close the trap door. Trap door grown shut, disappearing into the floorboards. We need to move the books back. That is important. You need to move the books uh, back so they're covering up the lever. Mananan will kill you if the books have been uh, have not been pushed back, if the lever is still uncovered. So yeah. So three things you have to do. You have to close the trap door with the lever. You have to push the books back. And yeah. And you have to put the wand back. Open cabinet. Oh, come on. Using the, uh, yeah. Okay, using the brass key, you unlock it. You carefully replace the magic wand exactly as you found it. And after closing the door, you carefully relock it. Okay, that is something you'll need to do every time you go down there so that Mananan doesn't kill you. That's it. Now the only other thing we have to do is quickly run to our bedroom and hide all this stuff that we have in our inventory so that Mananan doesn't, because, uh, all, again, all that stuff with the asterisk on it, Mananan will kill us for if he catches us carrying it around. So, good, we made it. So I'll say hide all. And we shove all our positions under the bed. And the only thing we need to get now is the porridge. Reach under the bed and retrieve it. That's it. So if you look at our inventory, the only thing we're carrying right now is the porridge, and that's all we need for now. So, I'll go ahead and save my game. Well, that went well. 
I was afraid that I might run out of time. I did cut a little bit close. We have only a couple of minutes until Mananan shows up. There is some randomness, in case uh, in case I didn't make it clear. There is a little bit of randomness regarding when Mananan shows up, so we may have to wait around for a while. So what I'll go ahead and do uh, while we're waiting is I'll take care of maybe a couple of other things. Uh, is there anything actually that I can do? One thing I know I didn't do is I didn't get the chicken feather. So if you come here into the chicken pen, What you can do is pick up a chicken. Gotcha, you've managed to catch a chicken, but what are you going to do with it? Well, what you do is you take one of its feathers. Tucking the chicken firmly under one arm, you gently pluck, pluck a small feather, then let it go. Okay. So we got the chicken feather. Uh, as you can see, that is a magic item which Manan will kill us for having. It's a little bit ridiculous that Manan will kill you for just for having a feather from one of your own chickens. I mean, if he really doesn't want you to have chicken feathers, then why does he let you have chickens? But, no, you can't just carry around a chicken feather with you. Manan will kill you for that, so... While we're waiting, let's go ahead and, uh, and stow that in our bed upstairs. Whoops. Okay, good. Hide feather uh, under bed. What? Okay, do I have to say hide all? I guess I have to hide everything and then specifically get the particular item or items that I do want to get. Okay, that's fine. So we have the porridge. Oh, wait, you know what I didn't do? Or did I? Hold on. This just says porridge. Did I not put the cookie in the porridge? Because I think normally it would say, oh, I didn't put the cookie in the porridge. Duh. Good thing I, uh, yeah, okay. So I'll need to put the cookie in the porridge. There we go. Now I have the poisoned porridge. Okay, that's good. Good thing that I, uh, good thing that I did that. That would That could have been... Could have been a little bit awkward if I'd forgotten to do that. Okay, well, I guess I could have gone, gone back and get, gotten the cookie still, but... Okay, so now pretty much all we can do, I think, is wait for Mananan. Uh, let me see, while we're waiting around, let me go ahead and quickly look up online uh, whether... Actually, I think I have a points list. Yeah, I have a, a points list for the game here. Let me just see if there are any other points that I can get while we're waiting. I don't think there are, though. Um, so I've gotten pretty much everything. Yeah, the only other thing we could have gotten was the eagle feather, but I didn't see the eagle. So when you're down in the valley, there is an eagle who sometimes shows up, and... Um, and if the eagle flies across the screen, then usually it'll drop a feather that you can pick up. So you can get, in addition to the chicken feather, you can get an eagle feather, which is useful later on. Um, other than that, I don't think... Oh, and I didn't get ocean water. You, you're supposed to get, uh, with that uh, tin cup that we got off the kitchen table, you're supposed to get water from the ocean. Uh, I didn't get that, but that's fine. We can get that later. We don't have to get that now. Right now, our top priority is getting rid of Mananan. So, um... Yeah, that... I'm pretty sure that that's it. That's all she wrote. So, we're going to have to just wait around for, uh, for Mananan to show up. And I guess while we're waiting... Is there anything I can do to pass the time? I don't think so, not really. We can walk around, but we've already seen all the rooms of the house. Um, if you come up here, this uh, gray thing by the corner of the bed is Mananan's chamber pot. He'll sometimes send you in here to clean it out, and if you do so, you just basically, you get it. And then Gwydion walks to the window and throws it out. Wrinkling your nose in disgust, you throw the smelly contents of the chamber pot out the open window. What a way to make a living. Because, of course, you know, in olden times they didn't have 
plumbing. They didn't have toilets that you could just flush things down. So, uh, here's that cat. I don't think I showed this, but the game actually lets you just randomly kick the cat for no reason, just completely unprovoked. And of course, Gwydion laughs about it. I'm not going to talk about that anymore because uh, I've already discussed the whole thing about cat cruelty before. Some people probably like it, some, some, some probably don't, so I'll just remain silent on that matter from now on. Um, what's on this shelf here? Doesn't look interesting, okay. The moose? You scrutinize the moose head very carefully, but you see it as nothing but an old head. You do feel sorry for the poor thing, though. Hmm. Uh, and out here... Another task which Mananan sometimes has you do is feed the chickens. So you can say, if you look at the feed bag here, the bag behind the fence is full of chicken feed. So you can say feed chickens. And Gwydion does indeed throw the chicken feed to the chickens. And of course the chickens come here and eat it. But there's absolutely no point in doing this. You don't get points for doing this. Uh, the only real reason to do this is if Mananan tells you to, and he didn't, so there's basically no advantage in me doing so now. I like the movement of the chickens. I like that the chickens will basically stay there where the feed is for um, for about a half, half a minute, and then they'll get, I guess, presumably full, and they'll start pecking around the rest of the enclosure again. That's kind of cool. It's kind of a kind of a um, nice touch. I mean, it's, there's not much to it, but it's it's just I do like that they actually uh, sort of program the chickens to move in that way to come to where the feed is for just a little while and then move away from it after they got full. It's kind of cool. I, I like little touches like that. I like I like it when a game shows that the uh, the programmer took the time to put thoughtful little touches into the um, into the way that the game looks and behaves. Aha! I have returned, Gwydion, and I'm ready to eat. Good for you, sir. Well, let's go ahead and save the game, and just to show it off, let me go ahead and show you what happens if Mananan uh, catches you with uh, with some forbidden items. Like, let's go ahead and get, uh, what was there, for example, the, uh, I don't know, the, the mirror, for example. Yeah, the mirror is forbidden, so let's go ahead and um, grab that, and let's come down the stairs and meet Mananan in the uh, in the dining room. Mananan is impatiently waiting for his food. His stomach rumbles as he drums his gnarled fingers on the table. You'd better feed him quickly or dire consequences may result. So he doesn't kill you right away. Uh, I think you have to... I guess in theory, if you were fast and gave him the porridge, maybe he would eat it quickly and not uh, and not kill you. But I think if you just stand here for a while with the mirror in your inventory, somebody knows that even though I don't think Gwydion is showing the mirror outwardly, somehow Mananan can see what's in your inventory. And if he pops up, um, if, if he's in the room with you while you're carrying something, he can just somehow see it in your pocket or whatever. Is he... Uh, Is he not going to get up? Is he not going to notice? Do I? Maybe, what if I show the mirror to him? Hey, man, I didn't see the mirror. To, I don't remember how to spell his name. No. Um. Are you going to get upset at me for having the mirror, or what? Come on. 
just want to show what happens if he if he sees that you're carrying a magical item. I should probably just give him the porridge already. It looks like he's not even gonna. Yeah, it looks like he's not even going to react to it, which is kind of strange because. Wow, that's weird. Okay. Well, if you're not going to, uh, if you're not going to get upset about me holding the mirror, then why don't I just go ahead and, uh, maybe let's go and visit your underground laboratory. I'm sure that you won't mind that, will you? Let's go ahead and get all our stuff from under the bed, because I'll need that. Actually, I was going to say, I need, I'll need the key to get underground, but actually, no, I, don't, I, I need the key to get the wand, but I don't need the, um, don't need the key to go into the underground uh, laboratory, so I could have just gone there right away, but that's okay. Now we're carrying all of his stuff, and let's go ahead and uh, just go there. Why not? Move the books out of the way, pull the lever. Gosh. I was so worried about Manan catching us, but he, he doesn't seem to care. He's probably just still sitting in the kitchen waiting for his uh waiting for his food. I think he can fall down the bottom. Yeah. He can fall off the bottom part of the stairs without dying. Uh well, let's just camp out here. Let's oh. Hey Manan. We're just kind of checking out your laboratory. You're up to no good, Gordian! Manan snarls through clenched teeth. Never again will you discover my secrets. Wow, that was a pretty dramatic zapping animation. I think that the way the uh, the story of the game works is Manan um, keeps doing this. He keeps kidnapping young boys, and when they uh, when they turn eighteen, he kills them. Uh, so you might remember at the at the beginning of the game, it told you that Gwydion was a um, he was 17 years old, and so basically the point is that Manana is about to kill him anyway. He's going to die when he turns 18 because Manana always kills his uh, his servant boys when they turn 18. Um, I don't know why actually. I don't know. I don't really know what difference it makes. Why does it matter whether they're 18? Unless he unless he's a pedophile, but there's no indication given in the game that he's sexually abusing these boys. He just likes to have young boys serve him. I guess maybe it's. It's just his deal. Who knows? Alright, let's go ahead and give the porridge. They're not hungry. I guess I need to specify whom to give it to. To wizard? Alright. You place the food on the dining table before the hungry wizard. Ravenously, he devours every bit of it. That's a great eating animation. It looks like he's punching himself in the cheek. You fooled him! Manana didn't realize the porridge was tainted and ate the whole bowl! Didn't he notice the cat hair? Didn't some cat hair get stuck in his teeth and choke him to death like it did with us? Oh! Congratulations! Manana will never again enslave you or the people of Ludor. At last you are free! Manana will never annoy anyone again. Can we talk to the cat? Manana seems unusually quiet, don't you think? Can we get the cat? You better get on with your quest. Manana is no longer a bother to anyone. Can we kick the cat? No. Okay. I guess the game believes in letting bygones be bygones. Now that Manana is a cat, which I'm sure in Roberta Williams' mind is the worst possible fate for anyone, then he will uh, bear his punishment forever. All right. Well... Let's go ahead and save our game once again. This is the pivotal point in the game. At this point in time, you don't have to worry about Manana anymore. You don't really need to worry about that timer at the top of the screen either. The timer at the top of the screen is mostly for you to time when Manana comes and goes. But now that he's uh, now that he's come, he's not going to go anywhere anymore. I don't think he even uh, remains here. Like if you walk off the screen and come back, yeah, he just disappears. He's not even here in the in the dining room. He's he's just nowhere. His cat sprite just disappears forever. Well, that's a cat, but I think that's 
Mananen's cat and not yeah, it's it's Mananen's pet, not Mananen himself. So that's it. Mananen's just gone. We'll ne we don't even see his uh, his cat sprite anymore. Just his his actual cat, but not the cat that we turned him into. Well, folks, I think this calls for a celebration. Let's go ahead and change that gloomy gray border into. Let's see, what color should we use? What's a festive color? I don't know. Orange? Orange is kind of... Eh. I don't dislike orange, but I'm not necessarily a huge fan of orange. But maybe orange works out well with all this theme of black cats, because it's, you know, a Halloween color, right? Black and orange aren't those the Halloween colors. So there we go. Orange and black Halloween colors for our black cat friends. All right, folks. Well, now we can go ahead and continue on with our quest, and we won't have to worry about the wizard banana anymore. We are free! Free as the wind! Well, we still can't fly like a bird, and we still can't see in the dark like that cat can, and we can't turn people to stone like Medusa did, and I guess there are a lot of things we can't do. But, hey, at least we don't have to worry about having to, you know, feed chickens or sweep the floor anymore. That's something we'll never have to do again. So, what further adventures await us in King's Quest 3? I don't know. We'll have to find out in the future. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed, and we will continue the f the uh, fantastic adventures of Gwydion in his post mananan life in the next video. I hope I'll see you then, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.